already touched a hundred. Nah, a million is the main goal. Bitches chasing me, but I keep chasing after change, though. Focused on the money, here's the stew in between. You can get it too, and all you gotta do is believe. I'm the man now I'm Cali, I'm the shit of Milwaukee. Made a stop in Ohio on my way to Kentucky. Yo, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. If you're new to my channel, I usually do a lot of reaction videos, a lot of gaming uploads, and vlogs. What's good, y'all? Right back at it. Um, you know how I be. Channels get rocky. Things, you know, people be happy to do stuff. So it's the reason why um I ain't been uploading a lot lately. But trust me, man. Trust me. Stay down. Um, we right into the video. We ain't gonna play. Ten rappers that are facing life life in prison. <sighs> life. And they ain't got them in there for life, Coachy and being on the run. And this track really blew up as people found out that the story behind the song was actually true. Now before TK's rap career ever actually blew up, he along with I'll, six I'll other people were charged with the murder of 21 year old Ethan Walker <sighs> back in 2016. He was then placed on house arrest pending a hearing to determine if he was going to be tried as an adult or not as he was 16 at the time. But TK wasn't feeling house arrest. Now he decided, you know, I'm gonna make a run for it. He tweeted out in March, 2017, this house arrest. 12, they gonna have to catch me on hood. And he then proceeded to cut off his ankle monitor and make a run for it. He spent the next three months on the run before dropping his track, The Race, and he was actually found and arrested the same day the track dropped. And after being arrested, he was charged with two new crimes. He was charged with robbing and murdering 23-year-old Mark Saldivia at a Chick-fil-A, and he was also charged with assaulting a 65-year-old man. Now, although he was 17, the court ended up ruling that TK would be tried as an adult for these charges. And from what I've read, it's not exactly clear how much time TK is facing. There was a rumor he could be facing the death penalty but that rumor was shut down by his manager but things are definitely not looking good one of his associates received life in prison earlier this year and another accomplice got 20 years earlier this year as well now, Max B was on track to be a very influential rapper back in the mid-2000s until he ended up catching a case that would land him in prison for 75 years. Yeah. Now, Max B is most known for popularizing the term wavy and a couple of different mixtape series that he had like Million Dollar Baby and Public Domain. But let's talk about what led to Max B being locked up for 75 years. According to authorities, back in 2006, Max B sent his ex-girlfriend and his stepbrother to rob two guys in a Holiday Inn. The robbery ended up going south. One of the victims of the robbery ended up being shot and killed. And about a week later, Max B's ex-girlfriend, his stepbrother, and himself were arrested and charged. The process for the trial went on for a few years, but in 2009, Max B was found guilty of murder conspiracy and robbery charges. And just a few months after being found guilty, he was sentenced to 75 years in prison. Now, recently, we've seen French Montana reach out, try to help Max B appear his conviction. Max B was denied multiple times over the years, but in 2016, Max B was able to take a plea deal and have a sentence significantly shortened. Wiz Khalifa even tweeted out in 2016 saying, Max B is coming home. Sentence got shortened. Looks like the gang will be working with the wave. So although Max B was sentenced to 75 years, it looks like he could be getting out of jail within the next few. Now, I know Suge Knight isn't a rapper, but he's been affiliated with so much throughout rap history, I just feel like he fits on this list. And it looks like Suge Knight's long, infamous history in the rap game has finally come to an end, with him being sentenced to 28 years in prison in October of this year. So Suge has had a long history with jail dating back to the late 1980s, and he's never really cleaned up his act with him going in and out of jail from then until his most recent 28-year sentence. Now, I could make an entire video on all of the charges Suge has picked up over the years, but Let's just focus on this latest one. So back in 2015, Suge Knight was involved in a hit and run incident that left a guy named Terry Clark dead and sent another man to the hospital. Now at the time, this was a highly publicized incident because it involved the filming of Straight Outta Compton. And according to witnesses, Suge Knight followed these two guys to a nearby burger stand after an argument occurred on the set of Straight Outta Compton. There was video surveillance footage of the incident. Suge tried to you know, claim self-defense, but ultimately he pled no contest to voluntary manslaughter and he's serving 28 years in prison. Dude, you had all the money. We ain't even gonna get, we ain't gonna do it. Rondo number no. 9 is a rapper from Southside Chicago. He was coming up during the drill movement in Chicago. He was also a part of Lil Durk's crew OTF before catching a murder charge back in 2014. So Rondo was 17 at the time when he was arrested and charged with the murder of Javon Boyd, a taxi driver. Rondo. And this was apparently retaliation for another incident. He was, he was charged with first degree murder shit. and had a $2 million bond at the time. Police ended up having fingerprint evidence and video surveillance footage of the incident. He ended up being convicted back in 2016 
and he was sentenced to 39 years in prison at the age of 19. Now Lil Durk actually claimed earlier this year that Rondo could possibly be getting out of prison by the end of 2018. Dirk tweeted, if I told y'all number nine would be home this year, would you believe me? No Dirk, I would not believe you. But Lil Durk told Billboard, I wanna set up a good future for Rondo. We've been back and forth with lawyers on his appeal and it's looking really good. He's going to get out soon. And I mean, I guess it's good to stay positive, but with the amount of evidence that the police had on Rondo, I just don't see any situation where he's getting out of prison significantly early. Now, one of the biggest stories to come out of 2018 is the recent arrest of Takashi 69 After having one of the biggest years in recent rap history, Takashi was setting himself up to truly be one of the biggest stars in rap. But ultimately, what made Takashi so famous contributed to his downfall. It turns out the feds have been building a case around the nine trade bloods for years and have been watching them as far back as 20. Takashi was picked up Sunday, November 18th after the feds found out Takashi's former gang may have been plotting to kill him and he was hit with multiple serious charges. One in particular I'm sure you probably heard but maybe don't know exactly what it means, racketeering slash a RICO charge. So racketeering is essentially a charge designed to take down mob bosses. I guess like your know, police had a hard time taking down people at the top of mobs because no one would ever snitch on the guy at the top. So they came up with this way to take down everyone as long as they had enough evidence to prove it was a criminal organization that did crimes in order to make money to continue funding that organization. And that's exactly how they're looking at the Nine Trade Bloods, with Takashi being the guy at the top funding this criminal organization. So with this charge, Takashi wouldn't even have to be present when certain crimes are being committed to be charged. They could take everyone down associated with the organization. So that's why things look so bad for Takashi. All the police have to do is prove this is a criminal organization and that Takashi is a part of it for these charges to stick. And over the last year, Takashi has built a brand around being a blood, specifically Treyway, and we saw Takashi go into the Breakfast Club right before he was arrested. In that interview, he claimed you know, Treyway was something he just made up, didn't have anything to do with the gang. He also said that he fired everyone on his team that he isn't affiliated with them. So Takashi may have seen this coming, but it looks like it might be too late. Takashi is facing 32 years to life in prison, and it's honestly going to take a miracle for him to dodge these charges. Now here's another infamous case very similar to Takashi's. I'm sure most of you guys remember when Bobby exploded onto the scene with his track, Hot Boy. All right, that's what the censored version is called. Back in 2014, Bobby blew up almost overnight. He landed the deal with Epic Records. His future was looking pretty bright until late 2017 when Bobby and 14 others were arrested. Bobby was charged with conspiracy to commit murder, reckless endangerment, and drug and gun possession. While other members of his crew had charges including murder, attempted murder, assault, and drug dealing. And with these charges, Bobby faced 8 to 25 years in prison. And what's so crazy about this case that's so similar to Takashi's is that the police have been watching Bobby and his crew for years prior to him ever being famous. They've been stacking evidence and building a case without them ever knowing, and it's because of this that when the feds struck and they had enough evidence to put Bobby away no matter what. Which is why I don't have a lot of hope in the Takashi case. Now Bobby ended up taking a plea deal and pleading guilty to one count of third degree conspiracy and one count of weapon possessions, leading to a seven year sentence that he's still serving today. But on the bright side, compared to everyone else on this list so far, Bobby should be a free man within the next couple of years stranger to jail throughout the years. But there was a couple of cases in particular that could have led to Gucci facing 20 years to life in prison. The first one was back in 2005. Ooh. Right when Gucci was dropping his debut album Trap House, he turned himself into police when a body was found behind a middle school and Gucci was then charged with murder. So this is what happened. While Gucci was at some chick's house, five men, three of them dressed in all black, busted into the apartment and began threatening to shoot Gucci, punching him and pistol whipping his friend. Gucci then fired shots in self-defense, killing one of the attackers whose body was found behind a middle school. Now, of course, with a murder charge, Gucci was facing serious jail time. But surprisingly, the charges ended up being dropped due to insufficient evidence. Now, Gucci claimed self-defense and he even had a witness that was there that backed up his story. But there was an even more recent case that almost landed Gucci a 20-year sentence. This was back in 2013 when a friend of Gucci's actually called the police for help because apparently Gucci was acting erratic and crazy. When the police showed up, they ended up finding weed and a handgun on him. And obviously, cops finding weed in the gun is never a good thing, but it was even right. worse for Gucci because he was a convicted felon, and this is what led to Gucci facing 20 years in prison. Now, Gucci ended up being charged with two counts of possession of a firearm as a felon, and once again, surprisingly, Gucci was able to get a plea deal where he pled guilty to possession of the firearm and only had to serve three years in prison, with him being released back in May 2016.
Lil Boosie, also known as Boosie Badass, could have faced the death penalty. Now, Boosie has had a string of run-ins with the law throughout his career, but it was in 2010 that Boosie faced potential life in prison or the death penalty when he was Bro, indicted on federal charges of first-degree murder of Terry Boyd. He was also facing charges for three counts of possession with intent to sell narcotics and two counts of conspiracy to introduce contraband into a penal institution. And it was in 2011 that Boosie pled guilty to the drug charges and he was sentenced to eight years in prison with the murder case still pending. Now luckily for Boosie, he got a few breaks along the way. In 2012, he was found not guilty of that first degree murder charge. And also in 2012, Boosie's lawyers were able to argue that the drug ring charges were set up because an informant offered to give Boosie some purple drink, which Boosie admits he was addicted to in exchange for his help. And it was because of this that Boosie was able to get out of prison early back in March of 2014. Nowadays, Snoop is known as the laid-back, pothead uncle to everyone in the rap game, but it seems like a lot of people forget that back in 1993, before Snoop dropped his debut album Doggy Style, he was facing serious time in prison for first and second degree murder charges. Apparently, Snoop and his bodyguard got into an altercation with a supposed rival gang member, and that altercation led to Snoop's bodyguard shooting and killing a guy named Philip Waldermerum. Now, although Snoop didn't fire the shot himself, he was driving the car they were in, so he was also hit with murder charges. The case lasted multiple years, and it was until 1996 that both Snoop and his bodyguard were acquitted of the murder charges. But the battle wasn't over for Snoop because he ended up being tried for voluntary manslaughter and accessory to murder, but both of those charges ended in a mistrial. Now what's interesting about this is that on Snoop's debut album Doggy Style, he had the infamous song Murder Was The Case, but he actually made that song before he ever actually caught the case. And Snoop has spoke about this saying that he felt like making that song spoke that case into existence, and that's something that he tries to avoid doing now. Similar to Snoop, you know, with Jay-Z being so solidified in the game, it's crazy to think that at one point earlier in his career, he was facing 15 years in prison. So this went down back in 1999. Jay-Z was attending Q-Tip's solo album release party, and at the time, Jay-Z believed that record executive Un was behind the bootlegging of his album Volume 3, and he confronted him about it at this party, allegedly stabbing him. Jay-Z ended up surrendering himself to police the next day, and he was placed under house arrest, and that's where he was facing 15 years in prison. Now, Jay -Z he ended up hiring a lawyer, Murray Richmond, and he was known as a lawyer for prominent mobsters in the 70s and the 80s. And this lawyer was able to work a little bit of magic and got Jay-Z a plea deal with him only serving three years of probation instead of the 15 year sentence. So Jay-Z pled guilty to third degree assault, took a plea deal and was able to remain a free man. And honestly, I can't imagine what rap would look like today if Jay-Z ended up being in prison for 15 years. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please make sure you drop a like on it. Subscribe to the channel. Yeah, that was good. That was a good video, man. Go subscribe. Yeah. Bring it for the kilo, yeah. bring it down for the people. Uh -huh. I'll make bands and rental. Uh -huh. I'll stun hard in a benzo. Yeah. I do this shit for my family, yeah. and I do this shit for my kinfolk. Yeah. I ride around with a 20 piece, yeah. and I make it all look simple. Yeah.